Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this edition of the news. This 21st day of September 2017 here at DBS Television. My name is Maange Venasius Fola. Yesterday marked 60 years since Cameroon was officially admitted as a full member of the United Nations. In the following paper, Philip Sote situates the policy of Cameroon as a member of the UN. His report. Cameroon became a full-fledged member of the United Nations on September 20, 1960. 60 years running and the country's non-contentious low-profile approach to foreign relations puts it among other Africans and developing countries on major issues. Cameroon supports the principles of non-interference in the affairs of other countries and increased assistance to developing countries. As an active participant in the United Nations these 60 years, where its voting record demonstrates its commitment to causes like international peacekeeping, the rule of law, environmental protection, and third world economic development, Cameroon has remained consistent in these principles. Principles that in concrete terms have been demonstrated by the sending of peacekeeping troops to conflict zones around the globe, the latest being the Central African Republic crisis. Concrete terms as demonstrated by the peaceful resolution of the Bakasi conflict between Cameroon and Nigeria. Concrete terms in environmental protection as evidenced by the country's participation at the last Earth Summit that took place in France. But when the country's territorial integrity is threatened, it also seeks international collaboration, like the Boko Haram insurgency in the northern tip of the country, where a joint multinational force was created, grouping Cameroon, Chad, Nigeria, and Niger. UN structures in Cameroon include the United Nations Fund for Population Activities, UNESCO, the United Nations Development Program, the United Nations Information Center, in addition to a host of other international organizations like the WWF, the IITA, the Institute for Demographic Research, and the International Red Cross, among others. These organizations and international bodies, including the numerous diplomatic missions, puts Cameroon's relations with the United Nations at a privileged position among the 193 member states and two non-member observer states of the Holy See and Palestine. The death of an inmate in the Bafusam Central Prison is said to have provoked a stand-up between the prisoners and forces of law and order. It took the intervention of the West Regional Governor to bring the situation to order, as Jalo Boba tells us. An unfortunate incident paralyzes the Bafusam Central Prison Tuesday, September 19, during the early hours of the day. An attempt to escape by inmates resulted to the shooting to death a prisoner named Pien Nana Patrick, who some sources claim to be mentally deranged. The prisoners confiscated his corpse and refused handing it to the authority, leading to a serious stand-up between them and the forces of law and order. The killing of the inmates provoked the remaining prisoners to use the incident to voice out their poor living conditions. It should be noted that there are said to be over 800 prisoners within the prison. It is equally alleged that many inmates sustained injuries during the stand-up, but according to the governor of the West region, our Fonka Augustine, his personal intervention helped brought the situation to normal. Stand up between inmates and the forces of law and order is not new in the country. It is high time, therefore, the prison administration seek for the root causes of such problems and provide them with lasting solutions. A word for a wise is sufficient, Jalo. The Cameroon Subcontracting and Partnership Exchange, dubbed BSTP Cameroon, continues enhancing the activities of small and medium-sized enterprises and links them to major companies. Within the framework of its traditional suppliers day held yesterday in Douala, emphasis was on the petroleum sector, which has a lot of potentialities. 
Williams Amo took interest on the objectives of the platform that was created five years ago by the government of Cameroon. His report. Referred to as a reservoir of opportunities for Cameroonian industries, the Cameroon Subcontracting and Partnership Exchange with French acronym BSTP Cameroon continues linking small and medium-sized enterprises with major national and international companies. Yeah, somebody like me, uh, it's important because I've never first of all learned about BSTP first. And secondly, um, it makes me understand that there's a bank in which we can uh, we can come in and give our information and and uh, we are known because it's, it's very difficult to approach some of these companies uh, fiscally. Rather, if you go through this BSP, I think it is the best approach. I really feel uh, congratulate the government for doing that. It's very important for us to have uh, um, uh, relationships, professional relationships with other Cameroonian structures and thanks to BSTP we have the opportunity to do that in, a, a, a easy, in an easy way because they have the opportunity to present to us different uh, companies that can provide the different services and products that we need in our company. This Center for Information and Development on Subcontracting Activities builds the capacities of small and medium-sized enterprises within the framework of the traditional Suppliers Day for the benefits of its members. The experience I've got gotten here is that you specialize and do what you know best. You don't try to say that because you are a contractor, I am doing civil, I'm supplying, I'm doing, I'm doing now. You need to have a specialty well experienced so that when you do something it's the best of it. Aside the generally appreciated objectives of BSTP Cameroon amongst which is providing relevant information on business opportunities with major national and international enterprises to growing industries, the five years old structure goes further to greatly reduce or totally eradicate some of the challenges small and medium sized enterprises usually encounter. You know our system at times you pick a project just say 50 million and the interest behind, you know, under, under the bench becomes a problem. And then secondly, uh, they always doubt us if are you really capable. Then the third problem is finance. How do you finance these projects? The banks are not always very ready to finance if you don't have this big collateral. So we find ourselves stretching our hands to areas that are not good. Where you go, you have more interest. For example, in Jangi groups, we meet big sponsors like the individuals and uh, they give you money and cut a lot of interest. Which that's the problem we are facing. But if not, uh, having the project of school generally is a big logical. BSTP Cameroon has been created by the government of Cameroon with a joint public private committee of 14 members for a convergence of concerted actions. We talk tourism news, high taxes, urban disorder, and inhygienic conditions, amongst others in the city of Douala, are said to be major setbacks to the tourism sector despite its numerous site. This observation was made yesterday by the regional delegate of tourism as inhabitants joined in commemorating the 38th edition of World Tourism Day. For Land Metuke reports. Cameroon is known to be one of the countries in Africa and one of the world with rich touristic attractions. The twin lakes of Manenguba in the southwest region, the Mezum in West Cameroon, the numerous and wonderful hotels in Douala and beyond, Waza Park in the north, the island of Manoka, the many travel agencies and many more have for over the years attracted lots of tourists in the country. Unfortunately, these touristic potentials are not properly developed, though the sector is third in terms of Cameroon's economy. If well managed and developed, the over one million tourists that visit Cameroon will increase and this is certainly going to add more jobs in a country where there is high rate of unemployment. As inhabitants of Douala join their pace nationwide in commemorating the 38th edition of World Tourism Day, September 20, some of its setbacks in the littoral region cannot be underestimated. High taxes especially 
on hotel owners and the city's noted urban disorder, which has become a sing song of the city council daily. And to bring it to the wall, the inhygienic nature of the city, these usually send many tourists away, having a bad image of the country. Amidst these setbacks, there is hope for the sector. We are organizing this event to celebrate uh, the Tourism World Day. And uh, we want to, to promote, we want to develop the tourist sites and uh, to develop the partnership between the uh, persons working in this domain. That is our main objective. And uh, we want to give to the littoral region an image which is very, very beautiful uh, because the region is very rich in potentiality and touristic potentialities. The most talk of developing this sector has for over the years been on this caution table. This is the time for it as Cameroon prepares to host the biggest African football jamboree and its 2035 emergent program. Urban disorder in the city of Douala, as we heard in that tourism report, is experienced in various forms. The following paper focuses on hidden root signs as another phase of urban disorder in our city. Root signs and signals are means through which road users are informed on how to make use of the road. It could signal a turn, a direction, permission to overtake, zebra crossing or speed limit. Evaluation of just one root sign could lead to grave consequences. As one drives along the streets of Douala, one may be tempted to conclude that these signs have little or no impact on road users. Like this warning note prohibiting any commercial activity along the road, Cameroonians have seemed to be unable to respond to such instructions. Or in this other fascinating one, drivers are advised that as they struggle to dodge pedestrians along the overcrowded roads, they should try to throw an eye on rooftops for some other signs are found on top of some roofs. Some are already serving as notice boards for enterprises or institutions, while others have been twisted to permit a wall of a building to be erected. If one were to be permitted to think aloud, one would ask if this is the result of lack of civic responsibility on the part of some Cameroonians, or the company that constructed these roads decided to place these signs as hidden as they are. This old woman attests that she has been selling in this place before the road was constructed. When I came here, there was no tar road. I have been selling here to date. This road sign was placed behind me here while selling. The road sign came after us, although we do not have the date at hand. To this user, these hidden road signs are a problem to them. They are unable to identify where they are allowed to stop. This has been the source of conflict between bike riders and municipal police officers who often impound their motorcycles. Laws, like someone said, may not be conducive for us, but because they are laws, we are obliged to respect them. The authorities in charge of this city have failed to realize that these signs are of no use any longer in most of our streets. If urgent action is not taken, then we should prepare for an urgent action when disaster will strike as a result of the negligence or non-respect of these road signs. Student journalist Raima Tusi tells us that the cry of the people living around Rompoy, Makepe, Petipei and Mesoke has been heard. This is as a result of some renovation works currently taking place in that neighborhood. Her report. The state of road in Douala is excessively in bad condition, especially this change of roads from Makepe Petipei to Misoke. These potholes are as a result of rainy season that has caused more damages than good to road in this locality. Talking to some road users, like this taxi driver, he said he cannot spend a month without visiting a mechanic because of the poor state of road. Bike riders also attest to the fact that accident is always frequent due to, this, due to these potholes. 
These potholes are covered by water, as one can see, a lake in the middle of a city. It is for this reason that the mayor of Douala 5, His Majesty Gustav Ebanda, has thought it wise to repel these potholes for the ease movement of road users. As for him, roads are essential infrastructure that supports social and economic development. In order for the work to go smoothly, the construction teams must extract water from the hole so as to ease reparation. The right treatment of the right road at the right time is the aim of the construction team as they go about the task of repairing road throughout the city. And in education news, didactic materials made up of chalk, notebooks and other items have been distributed to head teachers of government primary schools in the Dualawan municipality. This was by the mayor who visited various schools within his municipality. Raimatusi once more. <laughs> The mayor of Douala 1 received a warm welcome from six primary schools in his council area as they received didactic materials like bags, pens, chalks, among others. The presentation of these didactic materials to the directors of these public primary schools of Douala 1 was headed by Lengue Malapa on this 19 September 2017. The package comprises of teaching eight that teachers use on daily basis for the preparation of their lessons. The mayor, in his speech, did not fail to record that these gifts came from the government and wishes that the beneficiaries should make good use of it. According to him, this gesture is to encourage the youth in education because the youth of today are the leaders of tomorrow. The head of these primary schools expresses satisfaction. I'm the headmistress of uh, this school, uh, municipal school, uh, Mary Douala Premier. We welcome this, uh, the uh, honorable mayor today. He has come to offer the didactic materials for, for the children. We thank him very much because each year he provides didactic materials for the children. We want to thank him again, very grateful. At the end of the tour, the mayor of Douala 1 signed a visitor book marking the end of his visit. It is on that note, ladies and gentlemen, that we come to the end of this edition of the news. Keep watching program here at DBS Television. We would be back tomorrow for what would have made news. Have a blessed day.